Hi, welcome to the Crafty Toads episode 13. Lucky 13. Lucky 13, and we are ensuring that by making sure we have a black cat yes. here with us. We are um, lone larching it again today in our backyard. It's absolutely it's gorgeous outside. Finally, the humidity broke. We um, had a long stretch of horrible hot humid weather, and last night got some rain yeah. and finally broke. So um, Broke so much for wearing wool. I know, look at that. Um, we are going to do things just slightly out of order today because we can't wait to get this off our deck. First for the Crafty Toads. Yes. I thought we were doing this before everything. Well, I figured okay. we did introduce ourselves. Okay. Um, we are the Crafty Toads. We, this is a knitting and crafting podcast, mostly knitting and sewing. Every now and then we throw in a little crocheting to keep you on your toes, but other than that... Um, I am Mary Beth. You can find me all over the internet as Mary Beth 494 I am Helen. You can find me as Helen HG69. And if you're new, we're sisters. Yes, we are. We own a business together. We live together. This is our backyard. And we have two dogs, so you might hear them barking at shadows. Spike and Drusilla. They are the dogs. Um, our business is Toad Hollow. We are a gift store in Keeper, New Jersey. <laughs> And um, we sell lots of different things, including our project bags, which we make ourselves. There is something on my neighbor's roof that the dogs have decided to take an interest in. One of them knows what she's barking at. The other one's just barking. He's trying to figure out what's going on. Right? He's not sure. Hey, guys. Come on. Come on. Anyway, um, we live together and... Um, we have the two dogs, and we also have two cats. We thought about using one of the cats for our black cat today, but we're pretty sure she would get really skittish and run away, So, and we'd never see her again. We're kind of fond of her. Yeah. If you would go to Instagram, I think she made both of our Instagram feeds today. Is, so, is she on yours, too? She's in my stories. Oh, okay. So. Tabitha Stanley. Yes. So, um, you can find our Ravelry group, the Crafty Toads, and we have hey, a great group here. of people there that... Um, are commenting on the stuff that they're working on, asking questions. Um, we actually, one of the questions we have to answer today is from one of our followers about mixing colors and things like that. So um, it's a great way, place for people to come and share their information, share their knowledge and help each other out. So it's a great group of people. Um, so but shall we do the We have the to FO? do this FO because I gotta get it off me. Really, it's, um, we've been working on a test knit for the Meanest Mommy Knits, and it's called the Super Skip Fan Scarf, and we both finished ours in time for it to be part of the release, and um, if you would like to do this for one, uh, someone you know, it's on sale 20% off. Yeah. Uh, the, the pattern is on sale through August 25th which I think is Thursday. Go to Ravelry and search Super Fan Scarf. It, it comes up. Great. So. It's mine. I am uh, purple and black for the Ravens. It is a gift for my sister-in-law. The idea behind this is that you take your team, your favorite team, whether it be a Little League team or Major League team or whatever, and um, you take their colors and knit it into a scarf. So I am green and gold for the Green Bay Packers. And this is for my brother who is married to my sister-in-law. Um, and these are going to be Christmas presents for them. And you might see two smaller versions before Christmas for their little boys. Yes. They, we just have to decide what colors we're going to make them. Well, I think Turtles. somebody needs to... Oh, I was I was going to do blue and orange. For the Mets. For the Mets. Yeah. So, um... We'll do blue and orange and orange and black. One gets the Orioles and one gets right. the Mets. One will get the Orioles, one will get the Mets. Um, and they are... We made these out of Barocco Vintage DK, which is a mixture of acrylic and um, wool. We did it that way, so one of our cats is I'm in sorry. the window right there. I have a cat climbing a screen. Yeah. Um, did it a mixture of acrylic and wool so that um, they have two little boys, ages four and two and a half. Four and a half and two and a half. So um, we wanted something that could go right through the washing machine. So there we go. One... F.O. And I'm very, very glad a, to get it off me. But um, that we got it done in time so that it could be shown as part of her uh, project page. 
did we do these on size seven? Yes. I think seven. we did them on yeah. size seven needles. So that's what mine looks like. It really was very, very um, easy. It's and a perfect TV knit. Yeah. Uh, straight garter stitch. Um, the big thing is doing the twist. Not twisting the two colors together because you want the, there to be space in between them. but uh, And then doing the twist at the, the end of the little windows. So, very cool. Yes. Meanest Mommy Ravelry. Yes. Super fan scrub. Okay, so um, to back up just a little bit, we have a couple of quick things to talk about. Um, we have a knit-along that we're doing. The sun is going in the wrong direction. Yes, it is. Um, we may have to move the table. We have moved again. the table five times before we started the podcast. <laughs> Trying to we get thought it. we had gotten ourselves completely out of the sun, so it wasn't coming on the side. But as you can see. Okay, so. I have a halo. Look at that. But, um, I'll just lean forward. I don't think that's a good idea. Um, shall we twist it this way a little bit, do you no, think? No, going. you're going? Okay. Um, we're doing a summer sweater knit along that will be ending on Labor Day, which is September 5th. And um, all you have to do is show that you have been working on a sweater this summer and put pictures in our Ravelry group, the thread for it, and we will be picking prices. And we'll have a couple of different prices that we'll be sending out. And um, it'll be, it's, it's, we've got some people in there already. I mean, some people have already finished. And we if you think not. that you have to finish a sweater to be part of the count, please, you do not. We are no. not going to have our sweaters finished. This was just a, a, we thought it was a fun idea to get people knitting sweaters for whether it was going to be Rhinebeck or whatever. But during the summer... Um, so just put up your progress pictures, come in and comment on other people's. We'll just pick from the chatter thread a couple uh, winners. So. Right, because we're not doing a mixture. We're not doing an FO thread. Right. We're just doing a chatter thread. And um, if you have entered your sweater in other knit alongs, we don't care. Right. And it's any sweater. Yes. It can be a tank top. It can be as long as it's a garment that goes over your head or a doll's head or a child's head. Put it on. Throw it in there. Yep. We're More good. the merrier. Yeah. So, and besides, people have been getting ideas from other sweaters, so I think it's kind of cool that yeah. they're sharing them. So, it's, it's good. Um, so, yeah. So, come do that. And then we also have two swaps that we're starting. Um, we have a Christmas swap that we are going to be closing at the end of August, the beginning of September, probably right around Labor Day again. Um, and what we'll do is we will be matching people up from that, but... It's not going to happen till late November. The idea is you start gathering things that you might want to swap with someone for Christmas, and then you send them a Christmas box or a holiday box right around the holidays in December. So um, we'll We're get gonna... you your person so that you can talk back and forth and decide what you're going to swap. Just have something yarny in there. And they should go out by thanksgiving -ish. Right. Just so any international packages get have time uh, to get there yeah, in time for Christmas. My hair is and just And it's, like... it's not Christmas. It's holidays. Right. So whatever holiday you celebrate, just um, make sure you... Just work with your partner and let, let them know what holiday, but it, it, it does not have to be Christmas. Right. So just a December swap. We celebrate Christmas. Yes. So we tend to call things, you know, this kind of thing a Christmas swap, but it's not it's a holiday right. swap. So... Um, also, we have, we wanted to do a sister swap where um, sisters would swap with each other. And then we thought, well, you know, there's a lot of other people who might want to do it, such as a mother, daughter, or um, partners, or friends. You know, if you have friends that you get together with and you want to put together a swap with someone, look at the halo that is my hair that's going all over. Anyway, um... We're going to close that in the middle of September, and that will happen almost immediately. So to join that, please make sure you put your name in the thread. And the one thing that we ask is that you let us know how many people would be part of the swap so we can match up like groups. Yeah. Okay. So um, FOs. We did our the one big FO, but I have another FO, and you do too. Yes. Right? So... This is in my. This is the cutest thing. Box bag that I have I've ever seen. I'm in a little cat bag. Nope. I'm sorry. I'm in a sheep bag. So. Good 
need it, so. I finished one, too. And the most awesome thing about this is the yarn. Spooky toad. Spooky toad yarn. I don't know whether you, because I'm blind about the sun, can see mine is the Stellina version. So it's a sparkly spooky toad. Yeah, I'm trying to see if you can see it. You can't really. Kinda there is sparkly in here. here. Yeah. But mine is the regular spooky toad. God, yours looks massive. I know. <laughs> okay. Baby sock. So I did mine from Legacy Knits pattern. They have it on their Ravelry thread. Um, it's Legacy Knits Nerds. It's their Ravelry group. And I took their mini sock pattern from there and did that. And mine is uh, Jenny from Lone Lunch. I took hers. So she obviously does a much smaller sock. Because mine was only uh, 20, 24 stitches, I think. And I'm pretty um, sure mine was 36. Yeah. So. And it's really odd because I knit so tightly. Yeah. And Helen knits much more loosely than I do. And um, the difference... But having knit this little baby sock, I now know why everybody gets so enchanted with knitting little baby socks. I, I am can now, now going say to knit a baby sock. I finished the sock. Right. I turned a heel and everything. <laughs> and you are now thing. a sock knitter. I'm now a sock knitter. So. So cute. Yes. So we did this to um, show an example of our the new yarn that we're going to have. So that's our FOs. Which leads into, because it's not the yarn we're going to have. We had it dyed for us. Yes. So. This was dyed by Christina from Chelsea Yarns. She is our local yarn shop. And this is what it looks like caked up. And it is gorgeous. I can still lean on more in mine. Do you think so? Yeah, they, I can see Okay. It. Cool. And the green is like a, an acid yes. bright green. There's yellow. It, it goes from like fluorescent yellow into an acidy lime green. And there's some purple and black. Yeah, every so often you get the specks of purple, purple which is really cool. I get big stripes. Oh, purple. okay. But they're very, very cool. Interruption while we twisted the table a little bit so that Helen wasn't getting beamed right in the eye with the sun. Um, so, um, what were we were saying? We were saying the socks that we made, they are done out of spooky toad yarn that was dyed for us by Christina. Um, from Chelsea Yarns, which is our local yarn shop. And um, she dyed them for us because we are releasing a kit, a sock kit, a Halloween sock kit, um, tomorrow. In our, They will be available in our online store, which is toadhollownj.com, and also our Etsy store, which is toadhollownj.etsy.com. And um, it's a collaboration because she'll be selling them too. Right. Christina will be selling them from her website but you can only get the yarn and it's a yarn and bag kit that we are selling and we have um three sure. different bags and three different yarns that will be available this is one of the bags it's a special it's a new design for us for us it's a rectangle box bag and the handle snaps. Trust me, it snaps. <laughs> snaps. <laughs> so that you can either put it around your wrist or you can snap it to your pocketbook as you're wandering through Rhinebeck or wherever. So that you don't have to worry about holding it. And you can be knitting from it as you go along. So that was an idea that was given to us by one of uh, Christina's customers. Actually, um, I think she works there. Oh, does she? I think she's one of the, oh, okay. the, the employees there. So someone who works with Christina. Um, she loved the idea of the box bag, and she had seen it this way before once, and she said it was just such a great thing. So, of course. We're always sure. ready to jump on board yeah. that with that. So, um, new labels right here. And for the special Halloween bag, he gets a pumpkin. And then on the other side, you will get a total bag. With so. a spider. So this is one of the bags. There are two other Halloween prints. Um, Christina has the them right now because she was taking pictures because her pictures are awesome. Yes. Um, so you will see those tomorrow when we put them up. But we have the other so two. So each yarn comes with its own bag. And the only way you will be able to get the bag 
or the yarn is to buy the kit. Right. There also will be a progress keeper that is a part of each of the kits. Um, it's going to have a Halloween charm and a Swarovski crystal. crystal. Yeah. So that will be all be part of it. The cost of the kit will be $55. That will cover everything. And um, pre-orders will be starting tomorrow. And they will all be shipping the first week in September. The, the first batch. The first batch yeah. will ship the first week in September. So we showed you Crafty Toads. Or no. Spooky Toad. Spooky Toads. This is Spooky Toad. So that was the first one. And we knitted the sock out of that to show a sample of it. And then, I think do the other one first. Show the difference. This is... This is Pumpkin Toad. Pumpkin Toad. And I'm going to unravel mine because there is lots of orange and, and black. black. So cool. With black flecks all over it. There's some white and almost like, um, I'm doing this and you can't even see, almost like candy corn yellow. It's really gorgeous. So this is Pumpkin Toad, and that's another choice that you get. So when you order them, you'll be able to pick which yarn you want. Are we going to have separate listings? No, you listings? can't pick which yarn you, ha you want. You pick The yarn goes with the bag. Right, but it'll be separate listings, right? For the three. There'll or be do three. you pick? No, there'll be three separate listings. Three separate listings, okay. Um, we haven't done this yet. We still have to do this tonight, so just in case you wondered. But there'll be three separate listings, and the one thing you will choose, there will be... A certain amount of Stellina available and a certain amount of regular. Uh, $55 whether you pick Stellina or regular. Um, so there'll be a, a drop down to pick which one you want. But once the Stellina or the regular runs out, then you'll only, there'll only be the one. So Pumpkin Toad. That's Pumpkin Toad. Very cool. Very, very cool. I love this. Yeah. Orange is my color completely. I've always loved orange. And then the third one is... It's Candy Toad. And this is... Reminds you of all the Halloween candy you get. And this is just everything bright and neon. Is there pink in there? There's, There's pink, pink in there. Pink and orange and... Purple and, and yellow. Away from the camera. Really, really pretty. So, the sun is kind of blowing things out. Um... As I said, Christina took the pictures, and the pictures online are very really good representative of what the colors are. Um, so, very cool. We're very excited about the collaboration. Yes. Um, yes, it is just the beginning. We expect them to sell out immediately. Yes. Eight so, minutes. Eight minutes. Nine o'clock tomorrow morning. <laughs> nine o'clock tomorrow morning is when we're going to list them, and um, they will be available in, until okay, they sell 9 five. Okay. Or, you know, through the, the month of October. <laughs> Till they sell out. <laughs> so, um, yes. So they will be up and uh, available tomorrow. Yeah. Very, very, very excited about this. Ten of each on each site. Yes. Um, so uh, ten of each color, five Stellina, five regular. And um, if we sell out, we'll do another run. Yeah. Or just... This is our first time doing this, so we're doing this kind of to get an idea of how many bags we need to make and how much yarn Christina has to dye. And somebody asked whether we would have them. Uh, we are going to be selling at New Jersey Sheep and Wool Festival in September, whether we would have the kits. I am assuming that we probably will have them, but it just kind of goes, depends on how everything, the pre-sale goes. So, um, on whether we have to, you know, like give each other oxygen to get yarn dyed and bags made in time so excuse me my hair is being very distracting it's very so. it's lovely and breezy yes as you can tell but the, the wispy yeah my it looked like there was something growing out of my locks. hair anyway tomorrow we're getting our hair cut oh my God, i cannot God, wait i cannot wait Just can't wait all right so finished objects are done yarn is done shall we do works in progress we shall. I don't really have much. I have one. I have two. I only have one. I finished my baby sock. And then I cast on a bigger spooky toad sock for me. Well, we need to talk about our dog. Yes. So. 
Okay, so what Helen's muttering to me is we watched the last episode of Little Bobbins, and she talks about how when she makes socks. So, okay, just quickly. This is Spooky Toad, so I can take it down. Okay. Spooky Toad in a regular person's sock, and you can see that's a purple stripe, and it's going to be not, you know, self-striping, but it, it is stripey. So I'm doing these on... Um, Size 2 U.S. Chavus, 2.75 millimeters, cuff down. And I did a 2x2 two two twisted rip. Uh, how many stitches? 64. Okay. Magic loop. So, Little Bobbins. Little Bobbins. Was talking about her Dobby socks. Yes. And what did she say? She said... Helen remembers these things so much better than I do. The general gist of what she was doing in this particular instance was she was only going to make one sock and have mismastering socks for, I think, two skeins of uh, wool, which I thought was such a great idea that, you know, especially when you're doing like the Nip Picks, Nip Picks Felici, they come in 50 gram balls. So if you wanted to get, you know, five different colors and you didn't want to get 10 balls of yarn, you get five different colors and just knit one sock. Um, and have two and a half pairs. And have mismatched <laughs> socks. <laughs> well, you can miss it. You can just pick whichever socks you want out right. of the drawer. Um, For us, it's going to work really well because if we decide that we're going to take a pumpkin toad and make socks out of it, I will make one sock, and then Helen will make a sock, and we'll each have one pumpkin toad sock, and we don't have to get two skeins, skeins of it. it. Right. You just get one skein, and then and also it. it um, <laughs> Keeps you from getting bored with knitting exactly the same sock with the same colors and everything because you just takes away colors. takes away your second sock yeah. syndrome, right? Because you're um, starting a new uh, color. And also, when we're deciding when we're, you know, our budget allows us to buy yarn from a new shop, uh, we tend to have yarn envy. Yes, you pick yours, and then the other one picks theirs, and you decide. I really, All want, I really that want one. Is the one that she got. Right. So instead of having to buy one of each, you know, each by our own skein, we can split it that way. I so. think Helen is really pushing this because I'm making my marionated yarn sock that's in Halloween stripes, and she really, really wants it. And it's a unique yarn. She's never. It's a. She's not going to do it again. Kind, so. Um, so that um, she she really wants one of those socks. Yeah. So when I tell her that she's going to have to start knitting me socks, she's not really, but I'll I'll be getting socks out of her yarn, so it'll be good. All right, so my um, work in progress is my Mrs. Weasley sweater. I, of course, am in the middle of a row. I apologize for this. But I just... Okay, so here is... Most of my time... This past couple of weeks have been spent on finishing up the super fan scarf because I had quite a ways to go. But here is my stitch marker. So I have added one, two, two and a half, almost three colors to my sweater. And I am taking um, my minis. This is made out of minis. And I am knitting until I reach the end, which is about five and a half rows. Unless it's a larger ball, like this pink is Helen's happy feet for, that she made one of her socks um, out of. And that was a larger ball that was left over. So that one I just stopped at six, uh, six uh, rows. But this is what it's looking like. If I hold it up the right way, it's top down. For those of you that haven't seen this before. It's the Lifesaver sweater by Tannis Fiber Arts. So a lifesaver cardigan is top down like that. That's what the back of it. I have split for the... We are sitting right on top of this computer, so you can't really hold it out. But Split for the, the sleeves, and I'm coming down. I have come in for the waist, and now I'm going back out again. In for the waist, out for the hips. Yep. These hips need a lot of coming out. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. It is just glorious. That was uh, one of our questions this week from Mary on our Ravelry page. She wanted to know at what point did we start loving 
are Mrs. Weasley's winners. And we pretty much started loving them from inception. Yep, from the idea. We saw a lot of people making cozy memory blankets out of their minis, and we had just finished doing a uh, mini swap, and we didn't really want to do a blanket, um, so we decided let's make a Mrs. Weasley sweater, which is just mismatched yarn all put together, and uh, we found a cardigan that we liked and decided to go for it. And from the minute we started knitting it, yeah. I adore it. I absolutely adore it. I know that it isn't everybody's cup of tea, but for us, oh my God, this is so us. So, this is mine. I'm going to interject for a second because I love that for this episode, it looks like you're the tall one. I know. I'm sitting on a taller chair. We're, we're podcasting with, you know, half of my best head missing. <laughs> this is mine. Oh, it is gorgeous. I can't see because it it's over my face. I got a little... Oh. I got it like three and a half done since our last podcast. Again, working on... Oh, there it is. Okay. Sorry, this sun... I don't know whether it's blocking you, what you guys can see, but it's blocking what I can see. Um, working on the scarves, and then we did the mini socks for the Spooky Toad. And um, we had a show this weekend, so we were getting very busy show. making bags yeah. and things like that. So, so um, but absolutely adore it. Mary said she was she liked changing the colors, but she was scared. Um, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. I just I, I adore it. And as Mary said, not for everybody, but for me, I just I'm, I'm and I'm gonna live in it. Yep, because it's so soft. This is we are doing this on size six needles. Mm -hmm. U.S. needles. Um, I think we're both using chowgoos, right? Oh, I mean, I am. Yeah, we're both using chowgoos, and um, we are using minis. Five. five? I'm on a five. Oh, I may be on a six because I knit some tighter. But I'm not sure. Anyway, um, chowgoos. That would make sense because you, we, our stitches are the same. Size six. Yeah. 4.0 millimeters. Um, love it. Absolutely love it. So that actually kind of fits in with our other question that we got on our Ravelry group. This is from Stacy, who is Mookie Moo on Ravelry. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Stacy. And um, hi, Stacey. Mary. I didn't get a chance. I didn't say hello to you either. Stacy is knitting her first sweater in our cow. That is so cool. And I think she's almost done. Yeah, she's on her sleeves. Really, really beautiful. But... Her question is, um, she doesn't mind mixing colors with neutrals, but when it gets to mixing different colors together, she gets a little worried, and she was wondering if there was anything out there that could help her get over her fear for this. And what do we do? And what do we do? We wing it, We Stacey. wing. It. Yes. Our, I take two colors that I like, put them together. I don't care what anybody says, whether they go or not. If I like it, we do it. And our big thing is you can always pull it out. Yeah. No matter what you do, it is not permanent. So if all of a sudden you really don't like it, it may have been a little bit of your time that's been wasted, but you're still going to be able to use the yarn, and it's it's still okay. You just pull it out and start over again. Try a different color next to it. I have yet to reach two colors together that I dislike. So As far um, as our Mrs. Weasley? As far as anything. Yeah. You know, I have yet to get two colors that I really don't like together. Yeah, because so, it's, it's all personal preference. Right. Um, I mean, if you want to know what goes together, because um, uh, Stacy was asking about books or anything, there's always the color wheel. And there's a lot of um, websites out there on color theory. Yeah. So that, that might help you a little bit. But if anybody but, has a suggestion, right. just come into our Ask the Toad thread and uh, please answer Stacy and give her some suggestions. I think the biggest thing, though, for us is we just go ahead and do it. Yeah, whatever um, I like. And we look and see what we think. Yeah. And I'm then, the one that's going to be wearing it. Right. Um, and for the most part... Since I'm a selfish knitter, I'm going to be the one wearing it. That hasn't bothered us at all. Yeah. So, yeah, we just we just put colors together. I was going to say, and as you can see from our Mrs. Weasley, we just threw Yeah. Yeah. And we, we are not afraid of color. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. Candy turd. Yeah. Alrighty, so um, I think they're gonna be able to see me. 
I, we're going to see when okay. we get inside. When I get inside, start doing it. We're going to see. I hope so. Guys, the sun is <laughs> right behind us now. Um, and it looks like we're totally in shadow and you can't really I make, am a silhouette. You can't make Marybeth out at all. So I'm really hoping that we don't have to do this again. Yes. Okay, so um, we are on to acquisitions. <sighs> this has been a good week. This has been a really good week. Depends or a bad on your week, depending on how you look at it. If you look at it from my bank account's perspective, not so. What we do is we have the yarn pig, and he comes out, and depending on how well wrapped he is, as to how bad we or good we were um, during the week. We had to upgrade. We now yarn have. Yarn pig wasn't enough. We have a yarn goat. And he is well and truly wrapped. Yes. Poor yarn goat. Shall we show? We should show. Because actually, it's all really cool stuff. And it's not that bad. No. Uh, oh, God. I mean, it's not like, you know. After Rhinebeck. Right. So. We're going to have a whole farm just wrapped up in Rhinebeck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we had talked about Knitting Bunting Store Elm Tree Yarns on Etsy before. She has the greatest colors. She has... I'm trying to sneak it under the table tour. <laughs> the, she's got a whole line that's all around the Tudors that is just beautiful. I mean, really, really beautiful. Um, but she started by doing Beatrix Potter inspired yarns. And that's where we fell in love. And that's when we first saw her and fell in love with her yarns. And um, we finally allowed ourselves to make a small purchase this week. Actually, we purchased it about two and a half weeks ago, and it yeah, came. Yeah, we had purchased it. Came the our, day our after our podcast. Yeah. So, I got the Lady Mouse, and it is just, oh my God, it is so beautiful. This is one of those instances with, you know, yarn envy. I absolutely adore what I got, but I want to knit out of hers too. So this is where the Dobby socks are going to come yeah. into play. Because mine is BTL slash HT. I'm not sure what it is. I think it's um, it's a mixture of superwash merino and um, nylon. And, and Stellina. A Stellina. It's got silver Stellina in it. It is 100 grams. It's 385 meters. And the colors are unbelievable. They are so beautiful. Just so, so beautiful. Elm Tree Yarns. Ah, uh, that's Jemima Puddle, Puddle Duck. Cannot see. I am blindly holding this up for you. It is yellows and purples and greens. Here, tip that down like that so they can see the green. It is just spectacular. Oh, it is so gorgeous. And I mean, we had a hard time deciding whether we'd go Tudors or Beatrix Potter, but we decided Beatrix Potter was what we fell in love with first. So we'd do the Beatrix Potter first because we will be back. Oh, we will definitely be back. And mine is uh, Superwash Merino Nylon 8020. It's 100 grams, 400 meters, which I have no idea what the conversion is. So I guess BTL HT is not Superwash Merino. No. We're going to have to look that it's up probably and probably blue fleece less BFL. But that's BFL, not BLT. BTL. Yeah. Maybe blue tail blister. <laughs> I'm making things up. I have no idea. I will look it up. We'll look see. it up and we'll put it on the screen. So, Jemima Puddle Duck Elm Tree Yarns. Yes. If you get so a chance, here, her, um, if you put them together, you will see that they will make very interesting sock mates. Yes. One a little bit brighter, one a little bit more muted, but they're going to be beautiful. She ships very, very quickly. She's in the UK. How long did it take us to get it? It, it was like four like, or five days. It was amazing how and quickly we got it. And her shipping costs are very reasonable for the UK to the yeah, United States. Yeah, I think States. it was, what, like seven fifty, dollars Like $8 or something, yeah. $8 um, US to get this so. shipping. So, and she oh, sent well. us a Beatrix Potter postcard with teas and some candy. Look at the postcard, because I'm, I'm not sure whether the, um, I don't want the light to reflect off the packaging. It is such a beautiful card. 
And then she sent us two minis. We should take those out so you could see them. One is, I'd apologize for the crinkling, but if, if you haven't left because of the dog, you know, little crinkling is yeah. not gonna bother you too much. So you have right. Mrs. This, this one Tiggy is Winkle. Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. It's got blues and pinks and grays and browns. Oh my God, it's so gorgeous. The, I was, it was a toss up. I was doing eeny, meeny, miny, mo between Mrs. Tiggy Winkle and Lady Mouse and I went with Lady Mouse. I actually had picked, I, I had five of them that I had picked out and I just wrote out numbers and I said, okay, Helen, pick a number between one and five. And she picked one and it was Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. I'm like, okay, I'm getting Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. And then she said, okay, so I'm putting Mrs. Tiggy Winkle. I'm like, no, 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 make it Lady Mouse. <laughs> so this is how I decided at the last minute, but it was a toss up because I love this. And this is uh, a little mini of her Peter Rabbit colorway, which is so pretty, so very pretty. So great packaging. So thank you so much, Diana. Yes, we love it, and we will be back. Cannot wait to kick it up and knit my socks. I just oh. need to free up some sock needles and finish up a couple of things. So that was one package, and then um, in case you didn't know. We got a whole fever. Legacy Knits has decided to start dyeing yarn. And Legacy Knits is a podcast, mother daughter, uh, Sue and Chelsea. And I think most people say, know if them. If you're watching us, you, you probably know. know of them. Anyway, um, they decided to dye yarn. Sue is dyeing the yarn. And they started by doing, based on Hocus Pocus, the movie Hocus Pocus, which. I do not remember it all. I'm not even sure I've seen it. So we right. have got to get it and watch it. But um, everybody raved about it. Oh my God, yes. And I, I do think we saw it. I just never... I don't remember it. I don't think it was that great. Right. We'll have we to watch see. it again. We're watching it again and we'll see. But um, they dyed yarn based on the Hocus Pocus. And it went up for sale last Saturday. Yes, last Saturday. Just a, Just over a week ago. Yeah. Yeah. And we As went expected, on. It sold out in ten minutes. Right, it sold out in nine minutes. It was nine minutes they clocked it. But we went on and we said, okay, we're gonna check and see if we so can I get. I fully expect Halloween kits. Nine minutes. Yeah, we we went. We decided we would try and get some of their yarn. So I went through and I clicked on Winnie. We had decided ahead of time what the other was gonna get. We were working on dual computers. Right. Um. So I clicked Winnie. And it said, sale went through, and I love it. I absolutely love it. I can't wait to start knitting on it. So that was my purchase. And I had decided I was going to get the mini pack because I wanted them. I couldn't have everything, so we all laugh at that, and you'll understand why. Um, so I could put them in my sweater, and we could each put them in our sweater because they're, they're very healthy minis. They're 30 grams, I think. I and, think um, I said 30 grams yeah. each. We can um, each take uh, half and put them in our sweaters so that we get them in our sweaters. So then we were just intrigued at how fast everything was going. So we thought, let's see what would happen. Let's see if we go into another one, if it's still there. So I went into Sue Said So and clicked it and it said it's still there. I'm like, shall I do this? And Helen said, yeah, why not? So do you ever get just wrapped up in something and you I just, got Sue Said So. Just do things that you you're know, not supposed to? Sue Said So. So it's all greens and blues and purpley, really, really dark purples. And it's, it's, it's really beautiful. I love these kind of colors. So I did that. And then Helen's like, and all right. This was my backup choice. If I couldn't get the minis, I was going to get Mary. So I was, while well, Mary Beth was grabbing Sue Said So, I grabbed Mary. And then... We're like, oh my God, I can't believe we got four four of our, you know, choices. And I mean, we just can't leave Sarah. Because <laughs> if you're going to have two of the Sanderson sisters, you have to have You kind of have to have three. So we went a little crazy. Oh my God. It was just, it was like we were possessed. Yes. I mean, seriously, seriously possessed. Because we're usually very, very careful about what we, what we, we buy. What we can spend. And you know, and... Excuse us. To tote on the road. Yes. Quick tote on the road. 
We did um, the uh, show at the Cream Ridge Winery Saturday and Sunday of this week. If you could see my back, oh my goodness, I was, was wearing hot. a scoop neck shirt and I was sitting underneath the tent, but the sun was coming in the back. I burned the back of my back, my neck in the scoop part. It's really quite an interesting shade of red. Purple. I, 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 I don't, purpley. No, it's not. Is it? No, yeah, you're no. a little purple. Oh, well. I did a good job. Yeah. Anyway, um, it was beautiful. Very, it was hot and muggy. It was not beautiful. But it's, it's gorgeous country. New Jersey horse country? Yes. Um, you're just driving through and there are horses and sheep. If you are not from the state of New Jersey and you have ever been flown into the state of New Jersey, you fly into Newark, which is, it's not nice. The turnpike it's very industrial. is very industrial. It's just not any, but you drive through. And sometimes that's the only impression people get of New Jersey. Right. Because you're in and out so fast. Um, but if you come down and you drive through uh, this part of Monmouth County, you understand why we're the Garden State. Yeah. Um, it was just We were driving through gorgeous. the corn. And we're just looking at things. You know, there were houses for rent. And <gasps> we could go. We'll move. Yeah, we've been here for two years. Time to move. Time, the gypsy in us. Yeah. It's coming because wow. all of a sudden you're starting to think of, oh, maybe it's time to move. Yeah. And then you think of all the stuff that you have to pack. And you realize, I mean, no, it's really it's just a good so thing we're so lazy. I, <laughs> the idea of moving, I mean, enough to the only me. way I'm moving this time around is if I hire movers. So I'm pretty sure my mover uh, will put his foot down. <laughs> my brother John is the one that usually winds up moving us, and we have some antique we furniture help. that's I mean, beautiful. We, we, we don't sit around. Oh, no. I mean, we move no, the no, furniture no. too, but, he, but it's the three of us. We need the, the muscle. So. so. Anyway, um, just we are not gorgeous. And the winery was gorgeous. It was beautiful sitting outside. It was just, it was very hot and muggy. It was a, it's a really nice and thing buggy. they do though, because what they do is they set up tents and they have tastings inside, but you can go in and get a glass of wine or a bottle of wine and they have musicians playing during the afternoon and you can sit either in the sunshine or under the tent. And this weekend they happened to have Made in Monmouth do um, a vendor show there. And we were one of the vendors. There were about 12 each day, I think. Yeah. And they and had there a, were food vendors. They had a food vendor. They had um, one that was slices and ices was one day. And then um, a the hot dog guy. Guy came. And it was just, it's just a really nice thing. And they have amazing wine. So yeah. um, it's really too bad neither of us drink because they were bringing the vendors out glasses of wine to try. And it was just, it was such an opportunity that was But we were saying that we don't we don't not drink for you know any reason. It's just we've never really particularly acquired the taste. Um, but we were saying that if we ever wanted to, this would be the type of place to go do it where you do the tasting and they show you, you know, they teach you how to taste the the pineapple or whatever in the wine, so that and you could. I think they also tell you what it, how you pair it with things. Yeah, and we were so that you can you know make something and have. Pineapple wine, because somebody was telling us all about the cranberry wine that they put out only in the fall, For and Thanksgiving. it works so well with with Thanksgiving. Yeah. So, and we were talking to this uh, customer who came up to the booth, and they were saying that uh, they're usually the six ninety nine box of wine <laughs> type people, <laughs> and that they were so surprised at how varied the wine was, but also how tasty and and different it was. Not wine. A neophyte thinks right. of wine, I think, is what it is. And we are definitely neophytes because, you know, half a glass of wine for a tasting, we're both going to be then to asleep. I, I figure you just uncork the wine near me and I'm going to be out. So, um, but it, it might be a, kind of a fun way to spend the afternoon. Yeah. So if you ever, if you're in New Jersey, if you're one of our New Jersey viewers and you want to do a wine tasting, it's the Cream Ridge Winery in Cream Ridge, New Jersey. It's out by Heightstown. Um, uh, Renham 539. And great. Really, yeah. really nice place. And Tim was a great guy. Oh, great Tim host. was the owner. Really, really cool. So, yes. Um, so that was, that was the toad on the road. Yeah. That's pretty much all we've done. Um, our next big one is New Jersey sheep and wool, and that is what we will be focusing on because we are not nearly ready. And we have an extremely two and a half weeks away busy fall. Yes, we, we have. Oh, okay. So we have New Jersey sheep and wool on the tenth and the eleventh. Then we have a trunk show at Knitabit in Fanwood, New Jersey. That is the twenty fourth. We have. Well, wait. First, we do the New Jersey sheep and wool on the tenth and the eleventh. Right. 
17th and 18th are the nephews so because we are taking care are of our nephews. And I think so. they're going to stay Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Yeah. So we, we get there for three days without the parents. Without the parents. Yeah, I know. It's just yeah. us and the yeah. nephews. Oh, my God. It's going to be so cool. So cool. Um, we're very, really very excited about that. Part. We don't get to see them nearly enough. And this is just like our yeah. idea of awesome weekend. So Then the 23rd. The 23rd, 24th, and 25th is the New York City Yarn Crawl. If you and are anywhere near the tri-state area, this is like the most awesome thing. Yeah, because they, they give you pretty much you do a subway uh, stops. And um, you just do all the New York City yarn shops. You do all the yarn, yarn shops. shops. Um, we were desperate to do it last year. We found out about it, I think, the weekend of. Right. And we were doing um, a show in Asbury, so we, we couldn't do it. And we swore we would do it this year. We have totally overbooked ourselves for the weekend, but we will go in on the 20th. So Friday the 23rd, we're going to go in and do the yarn crawl. The 24th, we have a trunk show at Nidabit. The 25th, we have a fall bazaar in Asbury Park. Right. Then October 1st October is the next 1st weekend. Is the next weekend, we have a trunk show at Chelsea Yarns. The following weekend. The following weekend, we have the boys again. <laughs> and then it's Rhinebeck. Right. So. And then, and then in, in November, November, we November 20th, have we have trunk shows. a trunk show. The 19th, at I think. The 19th? Okay. Yeah. We have a trunk show at Do You Knit. And we are doing that with Volan Vine. With Volan Vine Yarns. So. Which is really kind of cool. Good. So, um, we have that coming up. And then December 4th, we have another show. Yeah, and those are just the ones that we've scheduled so far. Because, you know, we like to wait till the last minute to do these things. So. so. And we will be doing more kits with Christina. Yes. It's we have a, be a busy November fall. kit planned. So yes. That'll be fun. <gasps> she showed us the yarn for the November yeah. kit. Oh, my God. God. It's just so gorgeous. So gorgeous. Oh, jewel toads. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Oh, my God. I love it. It's yeah. going to be called Harvest Toad. And, and I can't we're wait. Gonna have, we're going to have two kits for that one. Right. And we have to find, we have to find the fabric right. for those. So we have that coming. And then we're going to do a Christmas one, too. Or yeah. a holiday one. Yeah. We're going to be doing a holiday one, too. So we've got that. So, yes, it is Send busy. Send chocolate. <laughs> chocolate. Lots and lots and lots of chocolate. Oh, my God. Anyway, okay. So, um, oh, and in November, I think we get the, the boys for a weekend there, too. Uh, so. It's like a Monday, Tuesday. Uh, Monday, Tuesday? Yeah, it's election day. Yeah. So Monday, Tuesday. Well, their parents go off to a concert where we get them. It's just, it's just it's so, so cool. exciting. We don't get to see them nearly enough. Um, so. Yeah, no, we're very, very, very excited about it. So, all right. So, what else have we been doing? We have found a couple of new podcasts that we we started watching. Um, First, um, we have to thank Three Sisters Knits. They were so nice. Um, Sheila won our hundred subscriber giveaway. giveaway. And she got her package. And if you want to feel good about yourself, about what you do, when you see somebody like the Three Sisters Knit, when they open up their package and talk about it, oh my God, Sheila, you made us feel so really good. Did. I mean, you really did. You did. I mean, she was talking, she hit all the things that we love about the bags, she loved about the bags, so that it was, it was, it was so nice that it, it just hit her right. perfectly. You know, and they, they got a name right, and it, yes. and it was just uh, it was really, really really nice. Said great things, and also gave us a great promotion. Yes, so thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. And we had sent a small package for Margaret too, and she opened it up, and it was just it was so sweet, so of them. gratifying. Yeah, yeah. So, so thank you very much, both of you. And we are doing the Scotland, Paris, <laughs> Italy tour at some point. I mean, between the four of us, one of us has to win the lottery at some point. Right. Well, the question that you had to answer to win the prize was, if money and time were no object, what would you do? Where would you go on vacation? And Sheila had said that she would like to go to Scotland and take Margaret with her and go visit family and then hit up a couple of yarn stores. And we said that um, we were really down with that as long as she adopted us as sisters and we got to go to. And she, she said that they are totally on board with that and that the four of us are going to go away and do some kind of trip like that. Um, so, so then we started and talking, then, and on their podcast, they were saying that they'd really like to add Paris to the trip, right? So, and we're we, we're up in you. We're yep. adding it. We're adding the whole country of Italy. Not only Tuscany, 
just the whole, whole of country. Italy. <laughs> so because we got to go see our family down in Sicily. Yes. Can't you yes. tell? <laughs> I know. We might as well hit Ireland on the <laughs> way too, because I'm pretty sure there's some Irish in here. The Graham. Sicilian blood runs deep. Yeah, inside. the Sicilian is the blood. <laughs> Irish on the outside, definitely Italian on the my, inside. My my mother, because we all look like my dad, which is. I got the inside. Yep. They're me inside. And oh, oh she boy, is it that true. So, um, okay. So, um, new podcast, new co- podcast. We found a tale of two knitters. <laughs> this is Jenny and Dina. Oh my God. They're hysterical. Okay. They're so they're two funny. Two friends in Canada. Yes. Um, and they get together and podcast and knit and, um, I, I see us a little bit there. Yes, um, most so. definitely. Um, so, Jenny and Dina, if you're watching, hi. Yes. And um, and Jenny actually started watching our podcast and mentioned it on Instagram yesterday. So that was cool. Yeah, but it's uh, they're lots of fun to watch. So um, if you like us, go check them out because chances are you're going to really like them too. Sorry for me playing with my hair; it's blowing in my eyes and everything. I know. God, I can't wait till tomorrow. If but I come back shaven, so I will know. Um, I'm pink. Hot pink. So my, I'm getting a haircut with my mother. So I won't get my hair dyed hot pink with my mother. Okay. Only because she won't sit around and wait for me. <laughs> um, and then there's, um, we saw a dog there. We mentioned him last week, but he just put out a new uh, episode that we just watched this week. And he was showing off his room of requirements. So explain and, uh, the room of requirements. It is all the toy, well, not all the toys. It's toys, he collects, they're collectibles, that, uh, but he thinks of it as toys that he would have loved to have had as a child, but his mother may have found a little dark for a child. <laughs> so, I saw, uh, next episode, he's going to be doing his room of requirements right. and showing. I want a room of requirements. Yeah, he's going to be showing some more of it. It's just but pretty sure beautifully there's a put together. A lot of dollhouse in there, so. Um. And just very interesting odds and ends that he's picked up over time, and it's 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 fun. It David, really if you're watching, if you don't know Jenny the Blogess, she is not a podcaster; she's a blogger. But if you don't know Jenny the Blogess, find her because you are kindred spirits, yeah. truly kindred spirits. So um, she would check probably her out. go to the haunted um, insane asylum. With oh, me. she would definitely. She, when she's writing her books, she goes to a haunted hotel to do her writing. So um, if you don't know her, you may already know her, and that's she's fine. She's very well known. But if you don't know her, find her, because really, you will love her. So, um, And then we have Babel's Traveling Yarns. That's I'm, I, I wrote it down so I wouldn't miss it. Grace O'Neill. Yeah. And she is Australian. No, she's no, Irish. In Australia. She's traveling, and she's right now she has landed in Australia. And I believe she is working to make go enough home. money to go home. Yeah. So, um, but they, she's decided, she and her boyfriend have decided they have to be adulting, start adulting, <laughs> and go back and, you know, get an apartment and all that kind of good stuff. Um, my advice is don't, because being an adult is really just... It's totally overrated. Completely overrated. Um, enjoy it while you yeah. can. Don't let the responsibility. Once you get encumbered get, by responsibility and, you know, God forbid, children. Yeah, it's just, um, you can't do it as much. Don't do it. No. <laughs> don't. Don't go home. <laughs> Stop at home, say hello right. to your mom, and then keep yeah. going. Yeah. You know? um, I wish I had done that. But just, I wasn't that brave. So. Okay. What else have we got? Um, we have, what are we reading? Uh, well, I finished The Miniaturist. I did not. Uh, Book club's tomorrow night. Uh, Book club is tomorrow night. I am I'm glad I finished it. Unashamed. Didn't like it. Didn't waste my time. I didn't think the secret that they were hiding was that great. I you figured know? the secret out right away. You did not. Yes, I did. I knew You it. figured out one. You didn't figure out the other. Oh, yeah, but I didn't care enough about it. Right. So. But it's just, it's... Come here. Excuse me. Come Dealing in. with repressed 16th, 7th century Dutch Dutch people. I, it, it, it's not my type of book. Um, I'm glad I finished it because a lot of people were raving about it. So I'm glad that I read it and I'm glad I know what it was. But um, I'm, I'm glad, glad I hired a reader to read it for me. <laughs> now if only she'd pay the reader. 
Um, so, what are you reading? <laughs> okay. Uh, what are you reading now? I am reading a silly little book. <laughs> okay, so we went from the miniaturist to fluff. Fluff, chiclet, summer read. Yep. Um, I think they call, call them like cozy books. Yeah. Cozy mysteries, that cozy kind of Cozy romance book. kind of yeah. thing. Um, I get emails every day from BookBub. If you don't know BookBub, if you have an electronic reader, you should check out BookBub. Yeah, they send you, you put in your preferences and they will send you book deals uh, every day. And every almost every day there's at least one free one. Yeah, there are um, almost always a couple of them um, free. So, and usually what it is, is it's free, it's like the first book in a series, so they're offering you the first book in the series free to entice you to then purchase the rest of the right. books. Because uh, I read one. And you liked it. The, I did. I really liked it. It was... The, the Sweet Mysteries? Sweet Sweets or something like yeah. that. Sam Sweet Sweets or something um, like that. But the word, one I'm reading is the first in the series. It's The Girl's Guide to Witchcraft. Um, and it's fun. It's really, it's no great work of literature, but it's tons of fun. It's a, She's a librarian and she just realized she's a witch. She's awakened her familiar who is part man, part cat. And she awakens him on the full moon, um, which has all sorts of consequences. So it's just, it's cozy. Yeah. Um, and really just tons of fun. Every now and then you need that kind of book. Yeah. I'm reading Firefly Hollow by T.L. Haddix. Also the same type of book. Um, this one is about a librarian. Um, really? This is how librarian. Okay. <laughs> well, she, it starts out when she's in high school and, um, she wants to be a teacher and there are no teaching spots available. So somebody suggests that she go work for the local library and she does. Um, and it's all set in Appalachia. Um, and her next door neighbor is a shapeshifter. So he shifts into his natural form as a wolf, but he also can shape shift into a deer. Um, so it's cozy. Fun. It's fun. It's really yeah. fun. And it's fast. It's easy. It's just a lot of a lot It's the of perfect good. thing for yes. if you, you know, have time for, you know, five, ten pages before you crash at the right. end of the night. This is perfect. Yeah. There's yeah. not, you know, you're not getting wrapped up in big lengthy plots or tons of characters. And I know. Trying to, yeah. when we were doing Madame Tussauds, trying to keep track of all the characters. Oh, yeah. my word. You know that it's going to be bad when the first thing that's in the book is a list of characters right. and then like the genealogy of the characters and everything. It's just okay. Um, and the list of characters takes up three pages. Right. <laughs> like, okay. So, um, so yes, we, that is what we are reading right now. Just fun stuff. Yeah. Really fun stuff. And um, what are we watching? We finished watching Limitless. Lots um, of fun. That was. Now we have to watch the movie. Because yeah. we haven't seen the movie with Brad Cooper, Bradley Cooper, although he we call does. We Brad. We're on a first name basis. Yeah. Um, he does show up a little bit in the TV series because his character continues on. But, um, yeah, no, it's, it's it's a really good show. It was it went for one season, and it was, last it was year. It was on last season. I think it's kind of up in the air who, if anyone's going to pick it up second season. Right, it was so. on CBS, and now possible that Netflix might be picking it up. I don't want to Show lose notes. my notes. Um, so, yes, we, we finished watching Limitless. That was fun. And now we have moved on to the final season of Person of Interest. We watched the first couple of seasons on Netflix. Really enjoyed it. And then they put on the second, the last season, like in April, May. But and they were doing... It was all over the place. It was like... Right. You know, two on this on Thursday Tuesday night. And, and um, another one Thursday. You know, Tuesday, and it's just... It was trying all to keep over. Track of it. it was too hard. And um, our hours are completely off everybody else's. Um, we, you know, work till 9.30 at night sometimes. So trying to keep track of what's on TV, we watch almost everything on Hulu or Netflix. Yeah. So, um, so for us, uh, my brother taped it for us and sent it down to us so that we can get caught up. Really enjoying that. Yeah. It's a good show. So if you, um, one thing, okay, what's his name? Reese, John Reese. Oh, John Caviezel. Jim Caviezel. Jim Caviezel. Jim Caviezel. He's a little wooden. Yes. 
tortillas, and you just have to get past that. I mean, when you first start it, it's like, oh my god, he's terrible. Right. However, it then they work it into his character so that it's just now. It's him. It's that's him. who he and is. That's, who, that's his character and that's his personality on the show. Right. So that it all it all works together. You just kind of got to slog through it a little bit. Right. Michael Emerson is his partner and he is amazing. For those of you who watched Lost, if you don't know, he is Ben Linus from Lost. And he was awesome as Ben yeah. Linus and... He's, He's good really good as Mr. Finch. Uh, Root and uh, Samantha are the best. Yes. So, um, yeah, no, there's some really, really good characters in it. Um, those of you who are Angel fans will recognize Root because Amy Acker comes and she's just... Fred. She's really, really cool. as a psychopath. Yes. But it works. It really works. So, okay. So, that is what we have been doing, what we have been working on. Um, we did want to show you very quickly... This is what we were working on at the Cream Ridge Winery while we were sitting under the tents. We were fulfilling our voodoo, voodoo doll. doll order. So this is what our voodoo dolls look like. Um, and these guys are going out in a big order. Somebody ordered 75 of them. So we are going to finish these up this week and send them out. But that's what they look like. And we will also have these at the New Jersey Sheep and Wool because we call them pin cushions with attitude. We use these as our pin cushions, and they're amazing. Um, God help us if we ever get shot. really mad at somebody. Yeah. Because as we're sewing, we're just blindly sticking the pin in wherever there's a free space, and oh, I don't we get mind. I stick it. I have a spot. I stick it first. <laughs> <laughs> these are our voodoo dolls. So we will use them to say. So long, so long. Go forth. And knit. Go forth and knit. Have a great week, everybody. Yeah. We will see you soon. And um, thanks for watching. Thank you so much. And I hope the dogs aren't too loud and that you can actually see us in the middle of the podcast. This is going to be an interesting uh, <laughs> edit. I'm going to see how this looks. Um, but yeah, thank you, everybody. Those of you that came back, those of you that are new, thank you for watching, and we will see you soon. Bye. Bye.